going on, everybody? This is Slick from Breaking the Clutch, back again with another video. Today we have something very exciting. 343 released B-roll of gameplay from not only one, but both of the new Brute Leaders that will be coming out with Awakening the Nightmare. We were able to see at least one of their names, one of them being Vordas, and the other one, I'm not exactly sure what his name is. I looked all over, could not figure it out, but we are able to see not only his hero unit, one of his extra special units, as well as... Uh, special unit building, which is a really new feature and something really cool, as well as his leader power wheel. So we will jump into both Vordas and this other anonymous brute leader and see what we have in store for us coming up in the future. Okay, so right off the bat, we are introduced to this awesome little squad of jump pack brutes as well as Vordas himself and his hero unit. So what it looks like is something very similar to the brute warlord. What you have is a hammer brute uh, with a lot of armor. Pretty standard stuff. What it looks like to me is he's also equipped with a special Y ability, which has to do with infusion, which I will get to in a second. Now, secondly, we are immediately introduced to a new style of unit for Vordas, which is a Brute Grenadier. Brute Grenadiers come in squads of two, and it looks like they are anti-infantry, and they also, I'm not sure if they can hit air or not, I know nothing of that, but it does look like they are also equipped with an infusion Y ability. Now, what I believe infusion to be is a area of effect uh, which actually does play a bigger role in Vordis's leader powers. But we know is that infusion does affect, say, units around, uh, say, a certain type of unit. So it looks like Vordis is based around infusion-esque units in general, and they will inflict a lot of damage when combined with leader powers against massive swarms of units. Brute Grenadiers are going to be only available out of the main bases. It seems they are a leader power, so that is something to look forward to. Uh, it's going to be a unit that doesn't replace anything as of right now. So that's pretty great. Uh, just a brand new unit. Moving on to Vordis' leader powers, I'll show a, uh, a little highlight reel of all these. From what I could see, number one leader power for Vordis seems like some kind of infusion mine, which is okay. Uh, second leader power seems to be some kind of passive that I bet you either does something to veterancy or increases damage for units or something along those lines. Uh, leader power number three for Vordis is actually the ability to produce these Brute Grenadiers. Notice how all of these leader powers seemingly have those infusion little logos next to them. They all, that's why I said they all kind of play a similar role into something, something bigger. It also looks like leader power number four is actually similar to Decimus's Vortex Lightning. It looks like um, this Vortex applies some kind of infusion damage. It's upgraded three times as well. You can upgrade it to a third tier, so that's something to look forward to. What I suspect is that Vortex is somewhat of a replacement for Decimus as this image right here shows an infected flood decimus form i think that will be something that we'll see in the campaign that's just complete speculation but uh, it seems like vortis and decimus share a lot in common moving on to leader power number five we have invigorating frenzy you can upgrade it twice you activate it to heal and repair units and structures within infusion pools and temporarily increases their speed and damage. So that's what I meant by an infusion area of effect. It seems like a lot of these units and leader powers do a kind of that you have to activate them manually and then they have this little aura around them similar to something I'd say out of maybe like methane uh, from Yap Yap, but this is something that's going to be exciting and new to use. Leader power number six is infusion tech. The damage and effects of infusion areas are now increased and infusion focus units are cheaper. So that means your Brute Grenadier um, and a couple other things I'm assuming that have to do with infusion will be cheaper. That's something awesome. Wraith Scorch, Mortar Ability, and Blister Back Rounds now leave Incendiary Gel on impact. That might be what Infusion is. Infusion might actually be like, say, it might leave an area of effect in any units that get into it are either slowed and hurt at a slow pace, or I'd say it's something similar to the burn from, uh, from Kinsano's Inferno. I have no clue, to be honest with you. Uh, number seven leader power looks like teleport. Number eight looks like an infusion drop of some kind uh, so that we can drop in units that I'm assuming maybe brute grenadiers, maybe call other things that, that do uh, work with infusion. Uh, number nine is maelstrom. Activate to fire a large vortex which pulls units into large area of effect. So that's something cool. I'll show it right here on the screen. They literally kind of get sucked into this big infusion toilet. That's kind of cool. I'm really excited to see what that looks like on massive infantry armies. I bet you it completely destroys them. Um, and then moving on to the final leader power, which is number 10, that is Cataclysm. You activate to flare up all areas of infusion on the battlefield, greatly increasing their damage and even damaging air units and structures. Okay, so infusion is something that doesn't damage air units immediately unless you have Cataclysm. It seems like infusion is going to be so common because I feel like as this final leader power, it has to be something that is very drastic, something very impactful. So that's something that I'm very excited to see. It seems like all of these units based around Vordas will have infusion-based area of effect. So that's pretty exciting. 
Moving on to the other leader. This Everything from this point on is going to be based on the second leader, which we have no idea what his name is. Uh, we just know kind of what he looks like and various other things about him. Right off the bat, we see a mega turret. Mega turret was something made, it was way back in Halo Wars 1. It was on a 1v1 map. In the middle of the map, you could control this mega turret via garrison, and it could absolutely rinse armies. It would just absolutely destroy things, and it's really cool because it's brought back as a leader power building unit. So what I mean by that is that you can actually build this unit um, as a building at any building slot, I'm fairly certain. Maybe only on mini bases according to this video, I'm not sure. But you can build it, and then it will automatically attack things, and you can manually set it to attack, I believe, as well, if it's similar to the Halo Wars 1 uh, Mega Turret, which is it, extremely exciting. That's such a cool concept. Instead of having a turret slot on your base, you actually can use a building slot for a giant turret, and it's the first leader power that this uh, that this leader has. So you can definitely see that defending some things if it doesn't cost money to use, if you don't have to manually select it. It's, it would be very interesting to see in-game. Also, in the same still as the Mega Turret, I also want to talk in the top left, they kind of snuck it right here. You're going to see a bunch of text over it, and I apologize for that. But uh, what you're seeing here is a garrisonable Wraith tank. It looks a little tiny bit different. It has some extra little spikes off the back, but it does look like they will have a Wraith tank that is garrisonable. So that's kind of neat, and I'm excited to use that as well. Okay, moving on to this final still, what we do see is actually the final leader hero unit. And what he is, is it looks like a giant ass brute guy hero with some, looks like uh, looks like he's got some distance. He's not a melee unit. I'm pretty sure he has ranged attacks. Okay, he has like a chain gun, but he also comes equipped with a bubble shield. That is pretty neat. That's something I was not ready for, did not expect. I did wish that a lot of the hero units, such as say the, uh, the elite honor guard for the shipmaster and the arbiter, I wish they would have come equipped with bubble shields. But regardless, I think that's pretty neat that they did equip it onto a hero unit. Finally, definitely going to be a hero unit to be reckoned with if his bubble shield is strong enough to withstand a lot of attacks. Very excited to use him early game. Also pretty cool I want to talk about, you will see a massive slew of flood vehicles. We didn't really see a lot of flood vehicles throughout other Halo campaigns, but it looks like the flood have taken over warthogs, marauders, choppers. It is very interesting and I'm a little scared to be honest with dealing with that. That could be absolutely ridiculous, especially if the flood can just take over my infantry army easily and then they start moving on to the vehicles, taking over that. Like I wonder if they can take over air as well. That's something I want to talk about in a future video. Okay, so what I want to move on to now is the, uh, the leader power wheel for this unknown leader as of right now. I will throw up an image on the screen for the couple things I'm going to talk about. Looks like leader power number one is that mega turret. That's something I'm really excited about. Looks like leader power number two is that I can't, I have no idea what that one is, but leader power number two is upgraded. Looks like you can upgrade it to three tiers and it does a bunch of different things. Um, it looks like moving on from that, we do have a sort of healing aura, maybe something similar to Bulwark from Atriox. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, it looks like leader power number four is some kind of vision-inducing leader power. It gives you a little more sight range. Leader power number five looks like it'd be some kind of eradication beam, maybe even a Hunter's Brand-esque type uh, thing. You can upgrade it tr uh, twice as well, so it has three tiers. Leader power number six seems to be some form of fortifications. Let's see, yeah, leader power number seven seems to be that garrisonable wraith tank that you can create. Number eight is some form of, I don't know, it looks like some kind of recycling. Uh, maybe it's for vehicles, infantry, I'm not sure. Maybe when you lose the first amount of whatever, maybe buildings, that could be something very neat. When you lose the first amount of something, buildings, they're just kind of rebuilt, or maybe, I'm not sure what it could be. It could be anything. Um, and it uh, looks, like, looks like leader power number nine is something very similar before I've seen in the past. Uh, what do you guys think number nine is? I'd love to see that in the comments below. Number 10 is Lich Vanguard, which is an extremely, extremely awesome leader power. It brings back the Lich, which we first saw, I believe, in Halo 4. I'll put an image on the screen right now. Um, and then I'll also roll the clip. It seems to fly in out of nowhere, do serious amounts of damage, and then just kind of leave. So what it says in the leader power, it says activate to deploy a powerful lich to provide area denial. Can be used to produce units. That is something I'm really excited to use. Of course, it sucks that it's the final tier leader power, but I think it is really, really neat. And I love the images, the visual effects going on with it. It just looks absolutely remarkable. Of course, as soon as it flies in, it also shoots out a gigantic, looks like maybe like, a, I don't know, like a portal of sorts. I have no idea. And then it shoots a big beam of death. It's crazy, man. It shoots just all this crazy effects going on. I'm really excited for this. Well, guys, 
that is pretty much going to wrap up the video. That is my assessment of this uh, Terminus Firefight B-roll from 343. What do you guys think about these two new leaders? Are you really excited for them? Are you just thinking they're going to be similar to other leaders we've got in the past? What do you want to see out of their leader powers? And just let me know what you think about new units as well, because I think we could see, what, two new units there, the Brute Grenadiers, as well as the uh, the modified Wraith Tank for Garrisons. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below about these two leaders, what you're going to see, and uh, what you're excited for. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Slick from Breaking the Clutch, and we'll see you guys next time.